I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm great. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I know. Uh, so this one, this is the uh, the second part to the 21 day challenge. Um, this one we're doing with the online program as well as the gym. So everybody that you know, Dust Life Boot Camp wide, who did the 21 day challenge, uh, you guys are all in here today on this webinar. Uh, I got quite a few of you logged in, but I know a couple of the gyms are doing their member appreciation thing today they're doing like a delta life games it's kind of like a field day for adults uh so i know a lot of them are there we're gonna have to send the recording i'll send the recording to all you guys as well uh but as you know the benefit to being here is that you can ask any questions that you may have and also as you know delta life boot camp one of our core values is over delivery so uh as always there's going to be uh gift cards handed out throughout uh, this webinar. So the more that you participate, the more that you answer questions whenever we ask them, uh, the greater your odds of winning one of those giveaways. Uh, also, we're going to talk about a really good book. Uh, it's going to be kind of the premise of what we talk about today. Uh, and I'm going to be giving away a couple of copies of that book as well. So uh, the more you participate, the more you answer those questions, uh, the better your chances of winning one of the cool prizes. All right. So I'll just start it off and just ask you guys, how did the, uh, How'd the 21 day challenge go for you guys? Uh, and while you're answering that, uh, I'll just say that again, we ran a 21 day challenge in November and I thought that that was the most I'd ever seen women take action in my life with just the, getting the 10,000 steps, prepping their meals and doing the workouts. Uh, but you guys blew that away with this one. This was, uh, this was by far the most I've ever, uh, seen somebody, seen women take action. It was crazy. And I'll show you a bunch of pictures here in a minute, but if you guys were on the Facebook pages, I'm sure you saw, uh, you saw all the pictures. I mean, it was, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Thanks for all the comments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You like posting the pictures, Erica helps hold you accountable. Uh, okay. So, and the last webinar we did and everything we've done for the 21 day challenge, that's what this was. It was just a, a boost after the first of the year to get you going. But we're going to talk about in this webinar, we're going to talk about, uh, how do we sustain that? We're going to go back to that number, that 3% we talked about in the first webinar. I'll remind you what that is when we get there, but you know, losing, uh, it seems like most people lost anywhere between five and 20 pounds. That seems to be pretty common. Uh, losing five to 20 pounds in 21 days is great. Uh, but it, it, but it means nothing, right. If we don't keep it off, if we don't, uh, if a year from now, if you, you know, January of 2016, if you don't still have those results and if you're not continuing to slide, right, uh, then it was kind of all for nothing. So that's going to be the primary mission of this webinar is okay. So now you know, realistically, can we stick to a really strict diet uh, like the paleo diet or any type of diet for that matter uh, for a long time? Studies show us that it just doesn't work out. If we try to, if we try to weigh our meals, if we try to count calories, if we try to count carbohydrates, uh, if we try to do all those sort of things for the long run, it doesn't work out for us. And then as soon as we stop doing those things that got us the results, we end up putting weight back on. Uh, and in most cases, more than we had lost in the first place. And I'm sure, uh, I know I've done it a lot. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the yo-yo diet and yo-yo exercise program process. So that's what this whole webinar, the what we're going to be talking about for the next 30 to 45 minutes is going to be on how to not let that happen. All that progress that you've made, how to not let that go to waste. All right, so we'll continue here. Uh, and like I said, anytime you have a question during this webinar, just throw it up in your question box. Does everybody see the question box over there? Uh, a lot of you guys are, are posting. So <clears throat> Pam, so glad to see you in here. You're always, always doing great. It's about a lifestyle change. Exactly right, Alicia. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So what we're going to go over today, here's all the stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our mission vision and how you fit into that. Uh, and you know, you'll see that losing weight for the moment doesn't, uh, that doesn't help us hit our mission and our vision for what we want. And I definitely know that it doesn't help you hit your goals. So we're going to talk about that. 
Uh, we're going to talk about so why a challenge. You know, if the yo-yo process, if uh, that three percent number, we're going to talk about that in a minute. If that three percent statistic is true, then why even bother with the challenge? And what are the dangers that lie ahead after a challenge like this? We're going to go back over that 3%. We're going to talk about yo-yo diets and workout programs. Then we're going to get into a brilliant book called The Thin Woman's Brain and how we can rewire our brain for permanent weight loss. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at uh, you know what right looks like, look at a couple of case studies. Mary Beth is absolutely one of my favorite case studies. We're going to take a look uh, at how she's done. And then we're going to talk about moving forward and how we can continue this success moving forward. Okay, so here's our uh, vision and mission statement. And here's our fit clients. Uh, you guys always log y'all's weights on Fit Clients every Friday. We have our Fit Client Friday where everybody goes in. Before this challenge started, we were right at about 2,000 pounds. So in the last 21 days, uh, you ladies have lost 546 pounds. That's that's awesome. Good job. Uh, and that's all because of the hard work that, that you ladies did. So our mission statement there to change women's lives through dedication and motivation so that they may achieve their goals and live happier lives. And so we know that we can't fulfill that mission statement if what I was saying earlier stands true, if you just lose 20 to 25 pounds in a crash diet or a crash workout program or for one month and a year from now, if you've put that weight back on or more weight, then we haven't hit our mission statement. Our vision, uh, we're a long ways off, as you can see. Uh, by 2020, we're trying to help uh, p women lose 50,000 pounds. We've only lost 2,546. So we got to keep this thing, uh, keep this going and we got to get you, uh, we got to get the weight off you guys and keep it off. All right, so why the challenge? I'm gonna go through a couple of pictures, but like I said, if you guys, uh, if you guys are on the Facebook groups, which I know you are, you saw all the pictures. You guys did amazing at always posting your 10,000 steps, always posting your meals, and then the coaches did a great job of posting the workouts for you online people. Y'all did a great job of posting pictures of yourself working out. Uh, and we just really enjoyed seeing all the action that was taken. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is one woman's meal prep right here. That is that is insane. That is exactly how you get results right there. Like we talked about in the last one, it's action accountability. And then that's how you get results. And you guys did that. You guys took the action and it showed the before and after pictures are coming in. I do not envy the coaches uh, at all. Jay, Kristen, uh, Jennifer, Chrissy, all those all those coaches that are having to pick the winners of the 21 day challenge. I feel sorry for those ladies because because uh, it was all really good. Yeah, here's more action. I mean, you guys just killed it. You prepped your meals, and there's literally thousands and thousands of pictures like these. Like I said, you guys can go on the Facebook groups and see them. Uh, you know, so here's what we're going to talk about at the end, Mary Beth. That was our 28-day challenge last year. I'm going to show you her new uh, before and afters at the end of this and show you how she's been able to sustain it for a whole year. Uh, Denise here, her one-year pictures are way better than her challenge pictures there, so she was able to keep it off. So does it matter? Everything that we've done, all this all this action that we've taken, all the weight that we've lost, does any of that matter if we just put the weight back on? I think you guys know the answer to that. Uh, it's no. So what's the downside of doing challenges like that? Okay, this challenge, the meal plans that we gave you or the ones that you followed uh, were focused on no sugar, low glycemic index. The way you guys probably viewed the meal planning was, you know, no bread, no pasta, uh, no sugar, those kind of things. And, I, and we, we got to get away. We got to get away from uh, from how we think about how we think about you know what we can't have versus just thinking about what we can't have. We're going to talk about that when we get to rewiring the brain. So uh, here's the first question for the first giveaway. Who can answer this question for me? If you remember from the first webinar, uh, what do these two numbers mean right here? What is that? What does that three percent number mean from the Women's Weight Loss Registry? This is a statistic that they came out with. What does that three percent number mean? First person to get it will get a $10 gift card emailed to them after this. All right, Mindy, Mindy, you win. Everybody, there's a bunch of people that all came in right at the same time. But for this first one, Mindy, you got it. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, thanks to everybody else. You guys all nailed it, but uh, Mindy got it. Exactly right. <coughs> so. <clears throat> this number is really scary because what the Women's Red Weight Loss Registry did is they did a study of all these women who actually uh, hit their goal. They had a weight loss goal and they hit it. So that's already a very small uh, percentage of women right there. So they had a goal, they hit that goal, and then the 3% is out of all those women who hit their goal after one year had elapsed, 
uh, only 3% of those ladies still maintained uh, that weight loss or that goal. So uh, for us, for a women's weight loss boot camp, that number is really a slap in the face. Like we hate that number. We want it. We want that number to go way up. Uh, and we want you ladies to be in the 3%. We want, we want you to be in the 3%. That's all we care about is that we actually change your life. And then a year from now, you have those, you have those same, uh, the same results that you had going into this. So, so why does that happen? Can somebody, uh, can anybody tell me why this happens? Why, why after a year do, do we put the weight back on? Why does that happen? Why does this yo-yo process happen? Why do we do these crash diets, these challenges, these, uh, these workout programs to get results? And then why does the weight come back on? Anybody want to take a stab at it? And there's no wrong answer on this one. <laughs> Pam, I think that's where the that's where the gift card right there. So Pam, I'm gonna send you a, a gift card just for that. Pam says because ice cream is good. <laughs> that is that is absolutely true. Pam McKinney, let me write you down with Mindy here so we can make sure we send you your gift card. <clears throat> okay. Yep, life happens, absolutely right. Uh yeah, it's just a diet. It's not a lifestyle change. That's hitting it right on. We get lazy uh, because yeah, you're off your normal eating, and then as soon as and then you're deprived exactly you know, because you, you you know you feel deprived during during the diet, and then whenever you you know <laughs> you have a cheat day, you go crazy because you've been depriving your body of all those things. Uh, loss of accountability. Absolutely, accountability is a huge one. Crystal, good job. Yeah, we set unrealistic goals, Erica. That's a good one. And, you know, and yeah, exactly. And it, it's I know for women that's especially true. We look at we look at magazines, we look at TV, we look at all those things, and we kind of compare ourselves to that. And we set unrealistic, and then when we don't hit it, uh, I call it, we call it the slippery slope in Dust Life Bootcamp. So you start a diet program or a workout program, you don't get the results you wanted to in the first month. So you just say. Oh, what the heck? And instead of continuing to slide right for a year, and maybe after a year, you know, you are at your goal, uh, you start sliding left and you fall off that slippery slope and uh, a year passes and you've put on more weight. So yeah, you guys hit it all right, you know, so, but the big problem, you know, the big question is, well, how do we fix it? What's the solution, right? Uh, and this is, I recommend this book, uh, myself and all the Dust Life coaches have read this book. It's been on our reading list for a long time. It is absolutely the best book you can read for women's weight loss. The Thin the thin Woman's Brain, uh, Rewiring the Brain for Permanent Weight Loss, which uh, Alicia's in here. She knows, like, I'm a, I'm a, uh, in my day job, I'm a full-time Marine. So the Marines always get a kick when they see me carrying around the Thin Woman's Brain book. I get made fun of quite a bit. Uh, but Rewiring the Brain for Permanent Weight Loss <coughs> by Delia. She also has, if you go on her website, there's also like a, like a, like a little program you can go through, a little video program where she'll basically walk you through how to rewire your brain. And this is just absolutely a really good book. She's got two common themes in the book. She talks about having physical hunger versus brain hunger. And then she talks about the willpowered thin woman versus the naturally thin woman. So, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, Alicia, it is funny. Uh, so real quick, somebody tell me uh, what's – let's give out another gift card right here. What's a sign or what's the difference, do you think, between physical hunger and brain hunger? So just give me real quick, like, what is physical hunger and then what do you think brain hunger is? So what do we think some of the differences there are? And while you guys are answering that, by the way, uh, Delia in her in her book here, uh, <clears throat> she talks about the three percent. She talks about how we have to rewire our brain to to not go back into that three percent. Uh, yeah, if you get a chance, read that book. But I'm gonna give away I'm gonna give away some here today as well. Oh, Mindy, you're all over this. Mindy, that's a really good answer. Uh, so Mindy said stomach growling. Stomach growling is an act is an absolute way to know whether you're physically hungry or brain hungry. <laughs> Actually, I'll keep that one between me and you. That's pretty funny. Uh, Alicia, physical hunger is actually needing something to eat. Brain hunger is linked to emotions like emotional eating. Alicia, I'm writing you down for a gift card. That was beautiful. 
Okay, that is absolutely correct. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I got a little bit of a cold. Uh, yeah, Alicia, you hit the nail right on the head. So physical hunger versus brain hunger. We're going to talk about dopamine here in a second, but dopamine is our brain's number one uh, hormone. It's our reward system. It's our cognitive reward system. It's dopamine. So uh, when we lack dopamine, there's a couple of different ways we can get it. And as you guys probably know, uh, sugar gives us a large dopamine spike. And most foods, whenever we eat foods, we get a dopamine spike. But if we continue to eat the same foods over and over again, uh, those foods will stop giving us the dopamine spike. Well, actually, it'll stop spiking our dopamine. Uh, and the reason that our bodies do that is so that our body, uh, our body knows that we need a whole bunch of different nutrients. So if we continue to spike on just one food, we might not get all the different nutrients we would from eating all sorts of different foods. <clears throat> so our body purposely uh, makes it to where when I eat a piece of steak, uh, I get a dopamine spike, and if I but if I keep eating steak for five days in a row, I'll stop getting that dopamine spike every time I eat steak. And every food is the same way. And like I said, our, our body does that to make sure that we get all the different nutrients from all the different foods that we need. Uh, and it also does that it, from a long time ago. It keeps us from eating food that's gone stale. You know, if you if you were able to eat steak and it was stale steak and you still got a dopamine spike, that would not be good. So our body has that built built in system to where. Uh, when we eat new food. So that's another thing that when we try to eat healthy, if you find something that works for you, if you're a chicken and sweet potatoes gal and you're like, oh, I remember Josh and my coaches at DLBC said that that's a good low glycemic index food. So, you know, chicken and sweet potatoes work for me. And if you, you know, you've probably noticed that after about a week of that, you can't stand the thought of uh, chicken and sweet potatoes anymore. It's because your body has figured that out and you've, you've stopped having those dopamine spikes. Well, sugar, unfortunately, of course, it would be sugar, right? Uh, unfortunately, sugar does not stop producing the dopamine spike. If we eat sugar every day, every day we will get a dopamine spike. And the only other things that are like that are alcohol and drugs. So that's what's so scary about sugar uh, is that it, we can actually become addicted to sugar. And sugar is in a lot of different things, right? Sugar can be in the sauce that we use for our spaghetti. Uh, and, uh, you know, like we talked about in the last webinar where we talked more about nutrition and the glycemic index and everything, there's a lot of foods that have hidden sugars in them. And that's, that's a huge problem because, like I said, our body never stops spiking having those dopamine spikes. So when we're just brain hungry, uh, really our body is just our cognitive reward system. <clears throat> our cognitive reward system is just wanting uh, – some type of dopamine spike. We're lacking some sort of uh, emotional reward. Whereas physical hunger, no kidding, uh, you know, our body needs nutrients, our stomach is growling. Uh, we, we know that we are hungry uh, and, and our body needs something. That's why we get physically hungry. Uh, so the first step is absolutely just to identify, am I brain hungry or am I physically hungry? And the example we're going to talk about here more in just a second, but the example that I always use is that when our cognitive reward system is satisfied, when we have plenty of dopamine in our head, we're not hungry. Think about, uh, most of you ladies have kids. I know a lot of you ladies have kids. Think about whenever you've got Christmas morning set up for the kids, you know, and, and, and the kids are waking up and they're coming in to open their presents to see what Santa brought them or, or whatever. And it's just a happy moment when you're in that when you're in that Christmas morning moment and the kids are going crazy and your dopamine levels are spiking in your head because you're happy. You, you know, how many times have you ever been recording Christmas morning and sitting there thinking like, man, I could so go for some ice cream right now. No, right? Like you don't have those cravings. Uh, you don't have those cravings when your dopamine levels are, are sufficient. You know, you don't have those cravings. So the very first, hang on one second. Let's see. We got some questions coming in real fast. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> Nikki, you're absolutely right. Sugar does have the same addiction as cocaine. So uh, so we're going to talk about in a minute how we can mindfully eat and how we can get away from that brain hunger. But for right now, all I want you to take away from this is that a lot of times when we're hungry, we're really just brain hungry. And we're really our body really just wants that dopamine. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can get do dopamine. 
Uh, you can get it from, you know, friendships. You can call somebody. You can call your mom. If you haven't called your mom in a while, you can play with your kids. There's a lot of different ways to get the dopamine. But the very first step that Delia talks about in her book is just being able to identify. So you need to take some time. Uh, just kind of draw down on a piece of paper and, and write on one side brain hungry and on the other side write physical hungry uh, hunger. And, and just kind of jot down some notes of what you think uh, each one is and just realize that we only need to eat whenever we're actually physically hungry. Now, don't go away from what I said. Everything I said in the last webinar about every, eating every three hours, that still uh, holds true. Because if you'll eat every three hours, it'll keep you from getting brain hungry, uh, and you'll be you'll be sufficing all the nutrients that your body needs. So eating every three hours is still fine. So I'm gonna go through a couple of slides real quick that we went through in the last one, and I just I just want you to know that these still hold true, but we're gonna adjust them for how do we sustain this diet and maintain these results for the long run. Okay, so you know it's still true you can't out train a bad diet, so you still need nutrition. We still need good, healthy macronutrients. We still need proteins, carbs, and fats with every meal, and these are still the best choices. Okay, uh, these are still what you should eat: the lean meats, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, little starch, no sugar. That's still the premise that you should stick to. <clears throat> we should still eat every three hours. And we should still eat five to six small meals a day. I'm not taking away from what we've done over the last 21 days. All this stuff that I showed you last time about these insulin spikes, you guys remember this from the last webinar? <clears throat> when we eat high glycemic index foods every three hours, our body still has insulin spikes. We still store fat. A good day looks more like this, right? We eat every three hours low glycemic index foods, and we stay in that fat burning zone, and we stay away from the hunger. All those things are true. But in Delia's book, she tells you whenever you go on a diet and you tell yourself, I can't have bread. In her book, she says, you know, <laughs> for the next for the next five minutes, try not to think about a polar bear. And uh, <laughs> my coaches hate when I do this because, you know, the, all you guys are going to be thinking about all day today is a, is a stupid polar bear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so whenever you try to not think about a polar bear, all you can think about is a polar bear. It's absolutely 100% the same whenever uh, we think about all those slides I just showed you. When I tell you to eat lean meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, a little starch, and no sugar, instantly all you start thinking about is, well, I can't, you, you think, I can't have bread. I can't have chips. I can't have rice. I can't have pasta. And so you become food obsessed with those things. And I always tell this story. Uh, this is the difference between the, the second common theme in Delia's book is about the naturally thin woman versus the uh, <clears throat> versus the willpoweredly thin woman. OK, and I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, we're going to name her Samantha and it's Monday and this is going to be our uh, willpoweredly thin woman. So Samantha goes to work on Monday and everybody's talking about this big party uh, that the company is all going to get together and go out to eat at La Hacienda, this really good Mexican restaurant on Friday, uh, and everybody's going. So starting on Monday, Samantha hears about this party that's going on Friday for the company, and all she can think about is, oh my God, not La Hacienda, uh, enchiladas are my favorite, uh, chips and salsa, I can't stay away, and if I'm going to be there, I've got to have a margarita and I've got to have some ice cream. And so she starts thinking about all those things, but then she remembers, nope, I'm on a diet, uh, I can't have any of those things. So it's Monday and she's already torturing herself to death, right? She's thinking all week long about all these things at her favorite restaurant that she cannot have. <clears throat> One of two things is going to happen. Friday is going to roll around. <clears throat> Yeah, you get obsessed with it. Absolutely, Alicia. Uh, one of two things is going to happen. Friday's going to roll around, and she's going to stick to her guns. No, I'm on a diet, and she's going to sit there, and she's going to be miserable. She's going to torture herself through the entire Friday and watch all of her friends uh, eat chips and salsa, and she's going to hate them because they can just eat chips and salsa. How do they do that? And they stay naturally thin, right? Uh, so she's either going to sit there and torture herself and not eat any of the food that she really wants to, or she's finally going to give in and say, screw it, this diet thing wasn't for me uh, anyway, <laughs> and she's just going to overdo it and overeat. So that's what we want. That's what we want to uh, <laughs> uh, actually 
hang on one second. So you tell yourself I can have the polar bear, but don't want the polar bear because the polar bear is bad for me. Uh, yes, Ashley, I'm going to answer that in a little bit. Ashley's question was, so do I tell yourself I can have the polar bear, but I don't want the polar bear because the polar bear is bad for me. Yeah, that's a, that's a great tactic. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. <laughs> but here's what I would rather you do. I would rather you on Monday, you hear about the party on Friday and the naturally thin woman would say, oh, cool. There's a party at La Hacienda Friday. I, I like La Hacienda. And she never thinks about it another second. She continues to prep her meals throughout the, the week. She slides right all week, eats, eats pretty good. <clears throat> uh, hits up all of her workouts that week. She gets her 10,000 steps a day. So she's doing it with all three pillars of fitness and not just trying to do it with a diet. So that's already a huge benefit. Friday, she gets there. She hasn't been food obsessing about those things all week because she let herself know, like, hey, if I want a couple of chips and salsa, uh, I can do that. Not a big deal. So she gets there and she might have a couple of chips and salsa, but she's not going to overdo it because she's not food obsessed with it. She hasn't told herself she can't. Most of the time, just telling yourself that you can have those things eliminates the problem. Just don't overdo it. You know, when you go out on Friday, Nobody has ever gained weight or not hit their goals because they had 10 chips and salsa. It just doesn't happen. But when we become food obsessed with it and we tell ourselves that and we stay away from that one thing for that long, that's how we get in trouble. Okay, so does that make sense? Moderation is key. Yep. Make that your cheat meal. Alicia, that's a good plan. Yeah, so the biggest takeaway, what I'm trying to tell you, the biggest thing is just don't become obsessed with it. Know that, and I'm going to go back to what, uh, was it Ashley? Yes, so I'm going to go back to what Ashley said a minute ago. So tell yourself you can have the polar bear, but it's just bad for you. That's a good way of putting it. And the way we said it in our last 21-day seminar that we did, we told them, you know, how do you feel whenever you do go out to eat on cheat night and you're like, finally cheat night. And you just throw down and you eat everything that you've been wanting and, uh, and lacking. And you just, you really enjoy it. And your dopamine levels are spiking and you're like, yes. How do you feel when you're walking to the parking lot after that? (laughs) You know, the nights finally come to an end or how do you feel the next morning when you wake up even worse? Yeah, the next day you feel guilty. That's good. The next day you feel horrible. Yeah, exactly. You guys are all hitting around right the head. You feel horrible. So you know it's going to happen. And when you when you become food obsessed and you deny yourself that and you say, no, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, and you overdo it or you overdo it with a cheat day even, you feel like crap anyway. So if you'll just eat moderately well throughout the day, still getting your 10,000 steps and still doing your workouts every day, You're going to continue to lose weight. You're going to continue to slide right week after week. And when you slide right week after week, you don't have to lose 20 pounds in one week. It's not healthy anyway. It's not good for your heart. It's not good for anything. Continue to slide right. And guess what? Some weeks you're going to go up. And I'm going to show you that in our case study here at the end. Some weeks you're going to gain a pound or two. Is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. All you got to do is continue to slide right. Do the right things. Don't deny yourself the pleasures of life because you cannot do that for a very long time. Are these 21 day and 28 day challenges that we do every couple of months? Is it good to give us a kickstart? Absolutely. They're great. But can we maintain that? Can we sustain that for the long run? No, absolutely not. That's why that 3% number is so small. If that number wasn't so terrifying, then we could do it. All right, it's time to give away one of Delia's books. Let's. Let's see what we got here. So I want to give away one of the books. Uh, so what are, who can tell me what the two themes of her book are? If who, who the first person to tell me what the two common themes of her book are, I will send you a copy of her book. Physical hunger and brain hunger is one of them. What's the other theme? There's one more theme. Physical hunger and brain hunger was one theme. And then the other one was physical hunger, brain hunger, physical hunger, brain hunger. All right, Pam, you got it. (laughs) Pam got both of them. All right, so it was uh, willpowerly thin versus naturally thin and brain hunger versus physical hunger. Okay, 
So steps to rewiring that brain. Let's talk about, we talked about physical hunger versus brain hunger. We're going to talk about steps to mindfully eat in a second. But first, let's talk about what are those differences between the naturally thin woman? Like I said, one of my favorite women's weight loss coaches ever. She has a brilliant YouTube video. And she her whole thing is everyone's got a story. Everybody, me included, is always quick to say like, man, I hate that guy or I hate that girl because she's naturally thin. But a lot of times you don't know you don't know what that person's been through. You don't know uh, how much they've had to work or how much they haven't had to work uh, to attain that. So let's talk about what's the difference between a willpowerly thin woman and a naturally thin woman. The willpowerly thin woman denies herself things, says I can't have it, uh, is, a, is obsessed with food, right? Sticks to a very, very strict diet and exercise program, whereas the naturally thin woman uh, generally eats the right things, gets plenty of exercise, takes her steps every day. Uh, eats very slowly, enjoys her book and, and uh, her her food. In Delia's in Delia's book, she uses language like when they sit down to eat, they prepare their meal, they take time, they're really in the moment. They they make their plate look very pretty. Uh, she uses words like ecstasy and fantasy about eating their food. They really enjoy the eating process. So let's talk about uh, steps to rewiring the brain. First step. And this is the hardest one for everybody to, to, to take. And I know it's, I know it's tough. Um, let me just read some of these questions real fast. <clears throat> okay. I know it's hard to wrap your head around this first one, but it's absolutely very important. It's okay to eat whatever you want. You have to get the polar bear out of your life. And I guess to answer your question, Ashley, uh, you know, don't tell yourself you can have the polar bear. Or you can play with the polar bear. Just don't let it eat you. Uh, I guess the best answer is just to not even let the polar bear be part of your life. You know, let yourself know that you can eat whatever you want. If you really want it, if, if the boss brings a bag of donuts on Monday and everybody's eating some donuts, you can have a donut. You know, the thing is to know is to ask, to let yourself know is that, you know, uh, if I want the donut, I'll eat the donut. But you know what? Now that I think about it, every time I eat a donut, I feel like crap. It doesn't fill me up. It doesn't give me the nutrients that I need. Uh, I'll have a bite maybe just to see how it tastes because everybody else seems to like it. But uh, but I don't really I don't really want the donut. I don't really need it. Uh, eat mindfully. Okay, what are some tips on how can we eat mindfully? Who's got some tips? Let's give out another uh, let's give out another gift card here. What are some tips? on eating mindfully or what does that mean? How can we do that? All right. Chantel's was the first one to come through. Thank you, Chantel. Uh, Chantel says plan ahead and everybody, Chantel, I'm going to write your name down here. We are going to send you a gift card. Actually, that's brilliant. Think of, of food as fuel. That's really good. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, think about what you're eating and what it has in it. Good job, Alicia. You know, is it actually going to satisfy what you need? Plan ahead is good. Healthy snacks prepared ahead of time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that at the end because that's the number one action item that still holds true against all this stuff. The number one tip that still gets you results, and you guys saw it in the 21 day, is still prepping your food. I can tell you everything there's to know about dopamine and metabolism and glycemic index, and I can we can talk and talk and talk nutrition. We can take 15 credit hours of nutrition uh, at a university. The still the number one thing that will help you get results better than any of that is just prepping your food. Prepping your food is still the number one way. Uh, but let's talk about eating mindfully for a second. So <clears throat> those dopamine spikes we were talking about, when you eat mindfully, Delia says that your body kind of knows when you're full, when you eat mindfully. Uh, and, I, and you guys have already heard all these tips, right? So you're not supposed to uh, – yeah, nutrition dense, don't have snacks, low salt. Yep, we're going to talk about that, Melissa. Thank you. Eat slowly. Yeah, now you guys are hitting it all in the head. Eat slowly. All, all these tips that you guys have heard before. So how do you eat mindfully? Delia says in her book that eating mindfully is literally being in the moment with your food. 
you know, not if you watch TV and eat your food, that's that's mindlessly eating. If you're doing something else and eating, you're not thinking about the food that you're eating. Like I said, when she did the study, all the naturally thin women described their eating experience. They use words like ecstasy and, and fantasy and all those kind of words. Uh, the uh, willpower thin women talked about diets and only eating such and such amount of things. Uh, Nikki says drinking water first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, drinking a glass of water before you eat, taking sips of water in between your meals. But for eating mindfully, you just want to really be in the moment and eat your food. Because when, as we transition from physical hunger into brain hunger, which will happen while we're eating, the food will start to taste bland to us. If we're eating mindlessly, we won't even notice that. We won't even realize that our brain is trying to tell us that we're full. If we're watching TV and eating, we're just going to eat until whatever's on our plate is gone. We're not thinking about and engaging in that meal process. We're not thinking about that whatsoever. We're just watching the TV or talking on the phone or driving. Our mind can't do two things at once, right? So while we're doing one thing, we're just eating whatever's in front of us. So that's another reason that they say, you guys have seen all the tips, you know, if you eat out of the bag. So if you open a bag of chips, a, a giant bag of chips and sit down in front of the TV to watch a movie, you could very well eat the entire bag of chips before you even know it. So yeah, Crystal says, focus on the flavors. That's absolutely what Delia tries to say in the book. Be in the moment, make your plate and enjoy it. And as you're eating, if your food stops to lose its flavor, most people add more stuff. If you find yourself having to add sauce or add salt or add some kind of something, some kind of flavor enhancer to your meal, your body is trying to tell you that you've had enough. You're, you're finished. You're done. You, your, your physical hunger has been sufficed and now you're going into brain hunger. So be in the moment, eat the food, think about what you're doing. And as the food starts to lose its flavor and stops tasting good to you, just put your fork down and stop. Uh, also, eating slowly is a good tip. Drinking water in between meals, you guys, you guys all hit it. Focus on the flavors. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's eating mindfully is one of it's like four chapters in her book. Uh, she goes into that in a lot of detail. So I hate just skipping over this just one little bullet here on the on the PowerPoint. Uh, because she goes into it with such with such depth, but that's another really good uh, thing that you can do is just try to really be in the moment with your food. Think about it. One, ask yourself, identify it. Am I brain hungry right now, or am I physically hungry? And then as you eat, take notice of those your brain trying to tell you when you're full. And when you're full, you've had enough. I mean, I know I gave you guys the example last time that when you eat your uh, your protein, you want it to be about the size of the palm of your hand. You want your carbohydrate to be the size of your fist and your fats. If you extend your pointer finger and your middle finger, those two fingers, you want your fats to be about that size. Uh, and you can follow those. Those are good rules to keep yourself from overeating. But mindfully eating is a lot better because everybody's body's different. And our brain is a, is a wonderful thing. God made us, uh, to an amazing point of, I mean, it's just amazing how our body works and how everything works. And your body is, is brilliant. You know, when you're full, I can't tell you exactly what's good for Alicia or Ashley or Nikki or Crystal or Megan. I can't tell you guys what's perfect for you, but your, but your mind will let you know a hundred percent whenever you're full. Okay. All right. Uh, no ways to increase dopamine. We were talking about this earlier. Are you hungry? You know, do you have that or, you know, uh, how do we get that Christmas morning, uh, feeling, you know, you're not hungry when you're having Christmas morning. Uh, if you've ever, if you ever remember being out all day, having a blast and then like the whole day goes by, you're like, Oh man, we forgot to eat. It's because your dopamine levels were fine and you never got physically hungry and that's, and that's okay. Uh, so no, figure out ways to increase that dopamine on a natural level. So if it's getting late at night, which is usually when it happens to us, uh, and we're getting ready uh, to watch a movie with the hubby or whatever it is, and we start getting those cravings, one, identify it. Hey, am I brain hungry right now? Uh, are my dopamine levels low? And then figure out other ways to increase your dopamine and see if, you're, see if your hunger cravings go away. It's a good way to do it. All right, know the effects of sugar on dopamine. Remember we talked about it. It's just as dangerous as drugs or alcohol. It's the only food that we eat that does not uh, hit that plateau stage with our dopamine spikes. It continues uh, It continues to spike every single time we hit that sugar. So I know I told you with the polar bear, you know, don't tell yourself you can't have anything. And, you know, 
eat sugar in moderation. It's fine. But just know the dangers of eating sugar uh, a lot because our body will, no kidding, uh, become addicted to sugar. And that's really bad because like we talked about last time, all those things we talked about last time with that glycemic index and all that, all that still holds holds true. Oh, yep. So here we go. Here's a whole slide on it. What can we do to mindfully eat? Uh, be in the moment like we talked about. Small bites, no distractions, no TV. Uh, drink water in between bites and enjoy the experience. Like I said, it's like four chapters in her book. So it's a really it's a really big deal. So if this has been a problem with you, if, if you're kind of watching this webinar and you're like, you know what? That's me. I, I mindlessly eat quite a bit. Uh, hopefully you take this away from this webinar so you'll just from now on mindfully eat a little more. So know if you're brain hungry or physically hungry and then mindfully eat. Okay, like I said, the biggest thing still, uh, the number one way to get results still holds true is prepping your meals because – Nobody preps their meals and throws a Twinkie in their prepped meal. When you prep your meal, you generally prep meals that are pretty good for you. You know, you stay away from those high glycemic index carbohydrates that are going to uh, <coughs> cause the problems. You eat foods that are better for you. You eat the nutrient-rich foods that your body really wants in the first place. Because if you wait, if you wait too long, if you wait until you're starving, uh, usually you just eat whatever's whatever's convenient, whatever's in front of you. But if you'll take the time to prep those meals, and remember like we talked about last time, uh, that can be anything from going out to the grocery store on a Sunday and, and prepping the entire week's worth of meals, or it can just be the night before throwing some stuff uh, in your bag to go for the next day. But absolutely, the number one, as far as nutrition goes, the number one way to get results and keep those results coming is to continue to prep those meals. Now, I can guarantee you, that those ladies that are in the 97%, they stopped prepping their meals. They stopped having a plan for what they were doing. And that year went by uh, and they gained the weight back. So this is one simple lifestyle change that you have to make is just commit to being a lifelong meal prepper. And this is the easiest one to do. Uh, and it gives us the best results. Okay, so I was going to tell you about the, the study of Mary Beth. I just want to show you this. It kind of cut it off right here, but she's lost like 27, 28 pounds, something like that. She was above 150. Now she's below 130 where she's at right now. Uh, but yeah, this is Mary Beth. This is her fit clients and she weighs in every week. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. You know, she weighs in every single Friday. But look, you can see when she first started, she started with us on a 28 day challenge. Look at that. That 28 day challenge, I mean, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And that four weeks and that 28 day challenge just straight down. The next week, she went up a little bit. So she wasn't on the challenge anymore. She wasn't doing it as strict as she was. And then, as you can see, as she went through this, as she stayed a member with Delta Life, she had ups and downs. She had some really big downs. She had some ups. You know, it, It's really easy on these two weeks where she had two weeks in a row where she could have given up, given up and got on that slippery slope. You know, Because this is two weeks here where she went up both weeks in a row. Uh, and if she had hit that slippery slope, this year would have went by and Mary Beth would have continued. She would have said, screw it. I can't do this. If she would have just, I'm just trying to stick to a strict diet program. She would have come down, come down, maybe not even made it this far. Maybe on these first bumps, she would have gave up. Uh, but especially right here, I mean, cause two weeks of weight gain really kind of take it out of you when you've been doing so good. She could have very easily given up right here and just continue to steady climb upwards. Uh, but she stuck with it. And then she had a long plateau, and then she came down really far, and then she went back up a little bit, and then she ended up coming back down. But here's the point. I mean, this is her when she started with us last April, and this is her now. I mean, and this is two totally different women, Mary Beth right here, and this is amazing. And she's going to, I have no doubt in my mind, she is never going back to this before. So just remember that, that it's it's a journey, you know, and we, and we, all we want to do is we want to be able to look back a year from now and be able to say, you know, hey, I kept it off. I did good. I changed my life. I lost a significant amount of weight, but just remember that it's not all going to happen uh, in just one day. And as you saw with her 28 day challenge, when she started with us, she had really good results, but then she went back up. She had her dips. She had her ups and downs. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Erica. Uh, Mary Beth has just done great. And I love her fit client profile because it just shows you perfectly how if you just stick with it and do the right things and trust the system, get those 10,000 steps, eat right 70% of the time and don't miss those workouts, you're going to look back a year from now and you're going to be really happy.
All right, so good job, Mary Beth. All right, moving forward. So what are the things we need to do to make sure that we do not end up in that 97%? You got to have a coach. I mean, you guys know that. Uh, that accountability portion is huge. You got to have the action, you got to have the attitude, and you got to have the accountability. Without those things, it's very hard to hit your goals. Uh, along with that is you got to weigh in once a week. We've got that built in with fit clients, but if you don't use fit clients, use something. But only weigh in once a week. We call it Fit Clients Friday. Every Friday we like to weigh in with our uh, DLBC members. But pick a day, make it consistent, weigh in once a week. <clears throat> that way you can go in there like Mary Beth and track and see, you know, hey, how did my last year go? Uh, when you crave something, let yourself eat it. You know, if you're if you're all week going crazy about having some ice cream <clears throat> at the end of the week or at some point, let yourself have a little bit of ice cream. It's OK. Like I said, nobody has ever uh, gained a whole bunch of weight or not hit their fitness goals because they had one cup of ice cream. It's just not something that's going to happen. Uh, real quick, Alicia just said, is fit clients something we can use after the 21 day program? Yeah, Alicia, uh, you guys, uh, for the online program, y'all now get one free month of, of the actual membership program. So that comes with a little bit more than you had in the 21 day challenge. Uh, you'll have a little more access to Jade. Uh, you'll be in the private Facebook members only group for the online program. And yes, you'll still have your full members portal inside of Customer Hub, and you'll still have fit clients for as long as you're a member of DLBC. Does that answer your question? Will fit client ever work for Android? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. They're supposed to be making the app for it right now for Android, but it's really easy to log in on an iPad or a computer. You can just do it once a week. Uh, you can do it at the gym. They have the app for the iPhone, but you can still just go to, uh, you can still just go to the actual website. And if you don't have that link, uh, we can send it to you, but you can just go to the actual website and do it. It's really easy to do from a computer. Okay. Continuing on here. Uh, whoops. You want to identify the brain hunger? We'll fly through this real quick, get to the end. <clears throat> if you have more questions, keep throwing them my way. I'll answer them for you guys the best I can. I promised you guys an hour, but I've still got a couple of gift cards we got to give away. Man, so good. So proud of her. Uh, okay, when you crave something, let it have it. Identify that brain hunger. Uh, continue to slide right. That's all we have to do. All we have to do is every month, we call it our BME, best month ever. Every month, you want to have a BME, right? So if you look back a year from now, think about it. You will never become part of that 97%. You will always stay in the 3%. If you just look at the end of every month and say, you know what, I'm better this month than I was last month. If you continue to have that slide right mentality, that slide right attitude, uh, you will always be in the 3%. And you'll look back a year, two years from now and be like, man, I'm so glad I started that journey. Uh, stick with a fun program that you enjoy. A huge reason why we stick with 35-minute workouts for the gym and sometimes even shorter for the online program, we like to stick to the 20-minute workouts, is because we know that we looked up the number one reason that women don't stick with a workout program is time. So that's why our workouts are short. They're to the point we try to get you the most results possible out of a short workout. Uh, and you guys have seen all the before and after pictures. 35 minutes a day, four days a week is plenty. That's all you need. Uh, so find a good, fun program that you like. Stick with it. And then that last one, commit to a permanent change. You know, make it a, a thing in your head that you're going to stick You're gonna stick to something. You're done with the yo-yo, and you're not going to go back up. You're not going to get on these slippery slopes anymore. Make that permanent change. Uh Make that permanent change. Make the commitment to yourself that you're going to prep those meals once a week, uh, weigh in once a week, get yourself a coach and get a program that you enjoy and make that lifestyle change. And I want you guys to look back uh, January 31st of 2016 and be like, I'm so glad I'm in the 3%. I'll be so proud of you ladies. Uh, okay. With that, I'll take any questions that you have. Let's see, Mindy, Pam, Alicia, and Chantel. I have uh, I have gift cards coming to all you ladies. And Pam, we have the book coming to you. Copy of uh, Delia's book. <coughs> uh 
Yeah, if you can get your family on board with it, it makes it so much easier for you to stick with it. That's absolutely true, Nikki. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. Let's think of a good, a good question from the webinar that we did. Uh, okay, so what's the brain's uh, cognitive reward hormone called? First person to get it, uh, we'll give you the $10 gift card as well. Oh, man. I, I, like, I want to take a screenshot of this and show you how 50 women just put dopamine all at the same time. It's hilarious. But Erica squeaked it out in the beginning. Erica, let me get your name down real quick. Good job, Erica. All right, ladies. I hope that y'all enjoyed uh, the 21-day challenge. I hope that you stick with it. I hope to see you guys in the 3% a year from now. Uh, we do these type of webinars. We do for our regular members. We're going to continue to do these like once a month. We'll have some kind of theme. We'll get together and we'll chat about ways that uh, we can get skinny. Uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, that's all I have. I'll stick around for a few more minutes for anybody that has questions. Other than that, thank you guys so much for attending. Oh, thanks, Erica. <laughs> Crystal, absolutely. Keep that polar bear away. <laughs> You're welcome, Pam. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Melissa. Oh, thank you, Melissa. She said this is the best program ever I've ever been a part of in many, many years. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Melissa. We enjoy having you guys. My daughter was talking and I didn't hear you answered me earlier about weighing in. Oh, I'm sorry, Ashley. What'd you ask? Can you repeat the question? Uh, thanks, Mindy. Have a good day. Thank you, Tawana. Oh, Ashley, I found it. Is it okay to weigh in with only weight once a week and then once a month do body fat? Yes, that's actually what we prefer, uh, Ashley. We prefer that you just do the weight once every Friday and then once a month, yeah, update the measurement and the body fat percentage. Absolutely. Good question. Thanks, Trisha. Glad you enjoyed it. Ashley, does that answer your question? Once a week with the weight, once a month for the Yeah, Ashley, I understand what you mean. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's that's the dangerous the dangerous part when those other numbers go up. Uh, just try to have, you know, try to have that good mindset. It's 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 the same thing. Uh, it's the same thing for us. We we go through the same thing. We see those numbers go the way we don't want to. It's uh, it's easy to give up. Uh, but just just trust it, you know. Like like I said, I've showed you Mary Beth's uh, weight number. I could show you her inches and her body fat does the exact same thing. Uh, there's not a woman in this world that if you stick to the 10,000 steps a day, eat right 70% of the time, and do the four workouts a week, you're gonna slide right. You're gonna head in the right direction. And like I said, one year from now, you're gonna look back and you're not even gonna recognize yourself. So I, I know that it's easy. And try to remember that whenever you have a bad month or a bad day. The the only thing that will guarantee that you won't continue to slide right is if you. Uh, if you kind of give up on yourself, okay? Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you have a good day too, actually.